The year was 447, and an intense the battle between the demon lord's army and the six warriors would come to an end, and right away we see the lord's undead henchmen approaching, coming directly from his castle. And then the tentacles of a huge golden creature attack them, and then we can see a woman with blonde hair who governs that being, and from beneath her tree tentacles, her soldiers emerge, who go to attack the skulls. And when they are fatally attacked, the blonde girl shoots her arrow at their bodies, thus bringing them back to life, and after that a white dragon emerges from the girl's back, flying towards the demon lord's castle. And then a little girl tells us that this is a transcendental castle, which belongs to Azrael, the lord of the underworld, and she says that the dark mountains under the rule of the dragon lord Vera have already fallen. Just like the great underwater citadel commanded by Revise, the lord of the sea, both were defeated, and with that, the little girl explains that the six heroes are concentrating their attack on the castle now. And their assistant adds that the goblin lord Dizolf and the beast lord Gazoth were defeated a long time ago as well, so there would only be the death hold fortress left for them to attack, that is, the place they were. And well, the dragon flying over the castle starts attacking them with balls of flame, and meanwhile, the humans raise their staffs to the sky, as a sign of glory for their group's imminent victory. And after the dragon's countless attacks, the golden tentacles begin to pierce the castle, destroying it even more, and then that golden being shows its face, and the demon lord watches it from his castle. And he recognizes that golden creature as Archiel, the great sage, he comments on the holy shots and the serpent lord Gisark having come to his castle first, and upon seeing that Archiel would also have knelt before the gods, the dark lord becomes indignant, to the point of breaking your crystal ball. He then threatens to incinerate him with his infernal flames, but is stopped by his canine assistant, who reminds him about him being the only remaining demon lord. And he says that the goddess of rebellion does not want him to be defeated there, so he remembers the promise he made to Rosalia, and then heads towards the exit of the castle, saying that this time he will accept his defeat peacefully. However, he claims that he is the king of the undead, and then guarantees that he will regain his throne in a thousand years, and outside, the humans continue the celebration for having overthrown the demon lord's castle. Well, after this event, two girls are sent to the underground ruins, a location discovered after the heroes clash against the demon lord and his troop. And then a woman recaps their mission over the radio, saying that they should search the empty nest for that rubble, and she explains that whatever trouble the girls have they should only use self-defense. And in this they claim that they understood the mission, and at that moment the anime gives a somewhat unnecessary close-up of one of the girls' butts, but anyway, Celia comments that they have already reached the seventh floor of the ruins. And even so, they didn't find any magical anomalies related to the activity of the void, but the girl on the radio tells them to get out of there as soon as they find the nest, after all the mission is just reconnaissance. And well, Celia ends the call, and Regina suggests that they don't get too complacent about the outward journey as they will need to worry about the return journey as well. And Celia interrupts her to explain about the voids, she says that these beings are the type of creatures that build their nests deep in the underground ruins, and therefore they should not allow them to get out of control. And moving further, they hear a noise, and soon realize that there are some fallen statues in front of them, and Celia describes those statues as a kind of grave goods, which would basically be objects with personal meanings buried with the deceased. And Regina suggests that there must be a very important king buried nearby, and Celia thinks that that place looks very lonely for a king to be buried, and going further, the girls arrive at a door. And Celia notices that it is active, so the girl suggests that it is some kind of magical device implanted, but Regina tries to break down the door with brute force anyway, but her colleague notices something written on its surface. And after taking some photos, she can't understand what kind of language would be printed there, and while she solves this problem, Regina continues examining the other side of the ruin. And when she leaves, Celia realizes that she has seen that writing before, and when she touches it, the door begins to be filled with a flash of light, and finally, it finally opens, so the room starts to light up little by little. And upon entering there, Celia wonders what that purple thing in front of her could be. But as he gets closer, his meter breaks, and Celia thinks that he just had some failure, well, she looks at that mysterious crystal and wonders if there is someone inside, and when she looks closer, she realizes that there is indeed something there, and decides to go help. The scene then cuts to the demon lord, he had finally found Rosalia, and she says that in a millennium, when the stars fall from the heavens, something will happen, and the Lord was already aware of what it was, and ends the speech of Rosalia, saying that a container in the shape of a human child will appear, to store her power. And so, his duty would be to find this human vessel, and she states that that's what he should do, and after this brief dialogue, she leaves, and well, Celia starts shooting at that purple crystal from before. And a voice complains about the noise she's making, and says that the seal of that magical barrier has probably made that crystal completely inaccessible, 
and he then wonders if it's been a thousand years, and states that the reincarnation ritual was a success. And meanwhile, Celia continues shooting, but soon realizes that that crystal is impenetrable, so she decides to use an antimatter bullet, and that voice reveals that it is actually the demon lord reborn, and says that she will give Celia the appropriate punishment. And well, he disperses all the crystal, and throws the girl away, but when he gets close to her, the lord is enchanted by the girl's beauty, and wonders if she is some kind of high-ranking elf. And then Celia awakens, and the lord remembers who was about to punish her, but the girl wonders how a child would have gotten there alone, and upon hearing this, the lord looks in the mirror, as he still didn't know he was a child, and when he discovers that he is in fact a brat, he feels that the reincarnation ritual has failed. Because he returned to the form when he was known as Leonis, the hero, but while he tries to imagine what had happened, Celia questions what he would be doing trapped in that purple crystal. But the boy becomes unresponsive, and when she touches him, he becomes even more skittish, and Celia believes that the trauma the boy experienced must have affected his memories, but she reassures him, saying that she will keep him safe. But she does this while pressing his face against her breasts, and the demon lord thinks about demanding more consideration from her, but soon realizes that that feeling is good. And well, after that Celia gives him a cookie, and the lord thinks to himself that he lost his sense of taste centuries ago, but he still considers that candy to have a good texture. However, he again criticizes the body he received after reincarnation, as he considers that human form to be very ridiculous and limited, and then he starts to look at Celia as the keeper of his life, for having helped him. And the girl asks if he's okay and introduces herself as Roselia, a swordswoman in training, and a member of the 18th platoon and says she's from an academy with a huge name. In this, even the demon lord himself didn't understand anything, and thinks to himself that he only understood her name and age, well, she asks his name, and the demon lord begins to consider getting information from her, taking advantage of the fact that she fill him like a simple child. And then the boy introduces himself as Leonis, the great lion, and Celia begins to think where she saw that name, because the demon lord said that name strategically, because he knows that Leonis is a name that carries the weight of an impressive legend of generation to generation. However, Celia only praises his name and calls him Leo, then the girl questions his age, but the demon lord feels his reputation is going to waste, as she gave him a nickname without his consent. And answering the question, he says he's around 10 years old, and Celia tells him that it wouldn't have been possible for the boy to have gone there alone someone should have kidnapped him and locked him there on purpose. And so she questions whether he was the target of a void, and Leonis asks what that void could be, and Celia is impressed by the fact that he doesn't know that, and it soon comes to mind that he actually has some type of amnesia. And meanwhile, Regina passes through one of the crystals, and soon her meter breaks, as well as her colleagues, and then she draws her sacred sword, and Celia begins to explain about the void, and says that they are enemies of humanity, which emerged 64 years ago. And so far, Humanity can't say what they really are, but one of the countless theories says that they are beings from another world, and that's why they call them a void, but Leonis thinks that that explanation was the worst you've ever heard. And well, she says that she went there to do research about the void, as they are easier to find in ancient ruins, and the boy remembers that he forgot to ask something important. And he asks which year of the sacred god's calendar they were in, but Celia doesn't understand what he was saying, and says that they are in the 64th year of the unified human calendar. But their conversation is interrupted via bang, and soon after Celia is warned about the sighting of a void, and then Celia throws herself on the boy, to protect him, and then a strange and giant creature appears in the room. And Leonis is finally face to face with a void, this way it's better for him to understand, since Celia's explanation was rubbish, but the boy is confused about what would make him an ogre, because the monster doesn't look anything like it. 1. And meanwhile, Celia attacks the creature, and Leonis decides that he will punish that void, because it is disturbing the sleep of his friends in that mausoleum, but when he tries something, he falls face down on the ground, as he is not used to the creature. Your small body. And after the girl struggles to try to hurt him, Regina finally appears to save them, but soon finds the unknown boy strange, and Celia says she will explain to her about it later. For now they must focus on their enemy, so Regina changes the mode of her sword to, explosion drag mode, and Leonis just watches the girl's weapon in surprise. And well, she attacks the creature, and the boy understands that the power of her weapon was at the level of a phase 4 explosion spell, and is amazed that the monster is still standing. Regina then tells them to go to the exit, as she will take care of the monster with her hands, so Celia decides to accept this, to protect the boy, but asks her colleague to be careful. And as they run, the demon lord feels that nothing is going as planned, and begins to think that the reincarnation ritual has really failed, because with such a fragile body, 
he will not be able to restore the glory of his kingdom. And in addition, he regrets that those creatures called the Void, are causing all that damage in his mausoleum, but he says he is holding back from going back there and killing them, as Celia is his only source of information, therefore the best strategy is to keep your demon lord identity hidden. And right in front of them, one of the purple crystals falls, and the boy says that that Void had more friends, and when the being appears, Celia recognizes it as a wyvern, but Leonis looks at the monster and sees no resemblance to one be of this species. So she tells him to run away, but the demon lord thinks about showing his power, because at that moment it will be necessary, even if she sees it. And then he starts to concentrate his magic to attack, but she tells him to go back and ends up being hit instead of Leonis, and the boy goes to her, and Celia tells him to go away and find Regina. And in her last words, she apologizes for not being able to protect him, he then calls her a fool, for thinking he wouldn't be able to survive a weak attack like that, and then the monsters start attacking him. And Leonis turns to them, and confesses that he really got a little attached to the girl, however, their biggest sin would have been the mess they made in her resting home, and for that they would deserve a punishment worse than death. And then he attacks them with a gravity manipulation spell, in his phase 8, he turns Swa, and when attacked by him, the monsters try to escape but are soon stopped by the boy, who burns them with another of his spells. And even if they died, the demon lord he is impressed by the fact that their bones survived the sorcery of phase 8, and this leads him to believe that this new body only supports a third of its strength in its glory days. And well, he looks back at Celia, but says that as a demon lord, a human's life doesn't matter to him, however, he recognizes that girl's bravery, and how her expertise in sorcery is in the realm of death. He is not capable of performing rudimentary healing magic. However, he does his best to help her, and little by little Celia's blood disappears, and little by little the girl opens her eyes, and in the meantime, Regina finishes killing the void, and then tries to communicate with Celia. But the one who hears his message is the demon lord, who starts to analyze that mysterious device that the girls use to communicate over long distances, and he is impressed by how humans manage to create such a complex magical device. And well, the girl finally opens her eyes, and hugs Leonis, thanking God that he is safe, but for him the girl should be worrying more about herself. And when she remembers the wound she received, she is in disbelief, running her hand over her body, so Leonis explains that he used sacred sorcery to heal her, but Celia doesn't understand what he is saying, and this makes him believe that humans they cannot use these types of spells, and for this reason they resort to advanced magical technology. And then she questions whether that power was from the sacred sword, and finding himself without a better excuse, he says that it could have been that, so Celia explains that she actually heard at the academy about sacred swords having healing powers. But Leonis says he doesn't know much about those powers, and asks what the sacred swords would be, and Celia says that these swords are a type of power that arose in humans so they could fight against the void. And she says that when these monsters appeared, several children appeared with mysterious abilities, and several of these abilities took the form of weapons, and that's why they call them, sacred swords. And Leonis asks about Regina's weapon, and Celia explains that her weapon is called Drag Howl, and these swords appear to mold themselves to the personality of the person who possesses them. And the demon lord understands that souls can physically manifest themselves as weapons, and well, Celia states that she does not yet possess a sacred weapon, and that is why she would have used a magical device in combat. And while they are talking, Regina goes to them and asks if they are okay, and at that moment Celia remembers that they were facing a void, and asks Leonis what happened to the monster. And he gives the excuse that the beast would have gone away, well, after reaching the surface of the ruin, Celia finally explains about the boy, and says that she found him abandoned, in addition, the girl explains that he is suffering from amnesia. And after letting her know everything, they continue their journey, and Regina introduces herself to the boy, so on the way Celia asks Leonis to hold on tight, so as not to fall. Then Regina makes fun of the boy, telling him to enjoy Celia as much as he can, as they are already arriving in the city, so the girl tells her to stop talking nonsense, and explains that the boy doesn't remember much because of his amnesia. But Regina tries to make him recover his memory by lifting her skirt for him, and then Celia tells her to stop again, as she will turn him into a dirty-minded boy. And with that, the demon lord feels humiliated again by a simple girl, but he notices that his human body responds physiologically to the temptation. And well, he looks ahead and notices something in his path, so Celia explains that that is the last bastion of humanity, built with the intention of protecting them from the voids, and in the center of the city there is a castle that houses countless sacred swordsmen. And the sword they use to fight, and this place is called the Seventh Assault Garden, and upon hearing this, the Lord realizes that he is a thousand years in the future. Six years ago, in the third Jardim de Assault, 
a confrontation was taking place, and several families were being sheltered in a safe place, including Celia and Regina as children. And Regina comments that the situation is ugly outside, as it is possible to hear the sounds of combat coming from outside, but Celia tries to reassure the girl, saying that her father is taking care of the situation on the front line. However, this is not enough to calm her down, as Regina says that she has never seen so many voids in the sky, so Celia says again that her family and her knights have never lost a confrontation before. But suddenly, the place is filled with red lights, making everyone even more apprehensive. But Celia tells Regina that as soon as she is blessed by her own sacred sword, she will join the battle. Furthermore, her preschool training will start next week, and she explains that her father is strict about it, and says that Celia must study as much as she trains. Well, she changes the subject and talks to Regina about a custom dress she's going to get, as her father said she'll need it when she starts receiving invitations from her new friends. Yes, the girls are talking about dresses at a time like this, until Celia goes back to talking about her training, and says that her sister Yudis agreed to teach her her special technique, to honor Celia's entry into school. And she says that her mother will throw a party to introduce her to everyone after the school opening ceremony, and well, in the middle of the conversation they are interrupted by reality, after all the world is ending around them. Then Celia tries to go to the combat arena, to help her family, but comes back to tell Regina that everything will be fine, and says that after everything is over, her mother will bake a cake for both of them. And then a silence takes place, and the door opens, giving light to the catastrophic image of the city, in which we are told that there are only 15 survivors in the noble area, and they have been sent to their homes for safety. Well, two survivors comment that of the thousand knights sent, none survived, even though they were the best of the best, and upon hearing this, Celia falls to her knees on the ground, and apologizes to Regina, as she promised that everything would be fine, but it turned out that she lied, because everyone was dead. And now returning to the present, they are Leonis on the access bridge to the seventh garden by assault, and the boy is amazed at the size of that entire fortress, and then Regina tells him that that is the city where they live. And Celia adds, saying that it is a valuable place for them, so they should keep it safe, and in her mind, the girl tells herself that she will never lie to anyone again, and this time she will do everything to really protect her life. Earth. Well, when they step there, Leonis is amazed once again, and says that he had no idea it was possible to build an island like that, but Regina corrects him, saying that that place was not an island, but rather a mega float. And she explains that their mission there is to travel across the sea, to search for and destroy empty colonies on the front line, and Leonis faces all that construction again, being incredulous at all that evolution. And well, they send the data from the mission to investigate the ruins, and Celia tells her superior about having found a refugee on the way, and says that she will take him to the dormitory, and she also explains that the boy seems to have a sacred sword. And upon hearing this, Regina is surprised with the fact that such a young boy had awakened the power of the sacred sword, and Celia says that in addition, Leonis also healed his wound, and says that possibly his good heart must have manifested itself as a sacred sword. It's comical when she says that a demon king has a good heart, but anyway, when Regina finds out about this, she understands that Leonis is not a simple defenseless refugee boy, and he questions what this defenseless person could be. Then Celia remembers that he still has amnesia, having been imprisoned for a long time, and then Regina explains that refugees are people who were expelled from their lands due to the invasion of the empties. And Celia says that rescuing refugees from other countries is another of the missions that Assault Garden proposes to do, but she says that Leonis doesn't need to worry now, as he will live with them at the Sacred Sword Academy. And the girl explains that that institution houses users of the Sacred Sword, to become, Sacred Swordsmen and she says that all children who received a power of attorney are obliged to enroll there. But in exchange for this, all these refugees receive a certain standard of living, and so Leona says that the offer sounds good, and proposes to do things as they say. At this point, Celia states that she will be responsible for all the documentation, and in the meantime, Regina leaves, and says that she will go shopping, and then Celia explains to Leonis that he must enter through the door on the right, to take an exam, as he he's a newly arrived boy. He then proposes to do it alone, and the girl says she will wait for him on the other side, but upon entering the room, the demon king is shocked by the whole situation, as his plan was to rebuild his demonic army, to subdue humanity from this. However, he notices that things are not as easy as they used to be, after all humanity has advanced a lot in such a short time, in addition, there are also monsters called, empty, but the worst thing is that he is in a child's body. Now, that is, nothing is in your favor. He then calls Kurwa and Sherry, his assistants, and Leonis says that it has been a long time since his deep sleep, 
and Croix says that a millennium of sleep lasted longer than he thought. And he questions him about how the demon king ended up with that child's body, and he explains that the reincarnation ritual didn't go as expected, and says that because of this failure, he ended up returning to his old-time human form. And Croix says that this is the first time he sees him as the hero Leonis, and Sherry says that he finds this new appearance of the demon king adorable, but he understands it as disdain on the part of his vassal. And Sherry says that's not the case, as he would never think of disrespecting him like that, so he lets this insult pass, and says that he will need their help, so they both make themselves available to serve him. And Leonis says that the place where they are now is an artificial island created by humans, and serves as a mobile fortress, this being their seventh fortress, and then he states that there are possibly six more of these giant islands spread out there. And Sherry says that humans are weaker compared to the descendants of the creatures, in addition, their civilizations could not outshine the elves, so she asks the demon king if humans would actually be able to create things like that. And he explains that that world is very different from what he imagined he would find before reincarnating, so with that in mind, he states that they must analyze and study human military power before rebuilding their demonic army. And therefore, the order is for his two servants to analyze the place for him, but first he warns them that sorcery has already disappeared in that world, and therefore they must be careful when using it, so as not to attract too much attention. And then Sherry questions what his master will do, and he says that he will infiltrate the human military education facilities, and although this is boring, the demon king knows that he will need basic care to stay alive in that fragile body. And while he continues his academic life normally, he will collect information along the way, and Sherry looks at him sadly, saying that he will live off the help of humans, and he looks at her seriously, and asks her if the girl sees any problem with that. And she says that she would like to be the only one to take care of him while he is in this cute form, but soon she gets another scare from the demon king, and with that Sherry puts herself back in her place, so her master tells them to move on with the flat. And then he goes to the examination room, where he is surprised by smoke, and then checked by another technologically advanced machine, and after being analyzed, a door opens for Leonis. And when he approaches there, equipment detects something wrong with him, making him use his mana suppression, so he can be clean again. And so, he notes that he should be more cautious, so as not to raise any suspicions, and well, at the end of it all, he receives a document with his face on it, and then Celia appears behind him and takes the document. And with that, she says that she has everything she needs to schedule his interrogation about the sacred sword, but Leonis appears to not know what that is, so she explains that when someone enrolls in that academy, the person needs to register the properties of your sacred sword. And after he goes through that, the boy will also receive an official student card, so the demon king thinks he should forge these properties soon, to be able to deceive them and not arouse suspicion. And Celia explains that all that formality is necessary, and says that she should keep his card for now, and well, before taking him to the dorm, she proposes taking a brief tour of the gym. And on the way, Leonis comments that she said she was on the front line of the attack, but the boy notes that the place seems too peaceful for them to worry so much, and she says that her swordsmen really are on the front line. And it says that the 7th Assault Garden prefers to have that security to prevent the voids from being able to invade them head on, and while the conversation was going on, the Holy Sword Academy was already well ahead of them. And arriving there, Celia presents him with the Central Command Tower, and explains that it is the cornerstone of that city, where all military matters are discussed and dealt with, but in addition, the place also serves as the headquarters of the administrative office. And then she questions him about what he thought of the place, and he says that he finds the view of the tower interesting, but Celia notes that the boy had a very dull reaction, compared to the common reaction that people have when they come across that building. But in his mind, Leonis is actually amazed, because that place is much bigger than his death hold empire, well, walking a little further, Celia introduces him to the conference room, and explains that there is the place where they develop all the learning they had in the classroom. Ayn then shows the main library, and next to it, is the research laboratory, and well, he wonders if all those facilities were just from the Sacred Sword Academy. But she says no, because in addition to that, they also have a dance hall and other leisure facilities, in addition, they also have their dormitories, where there is a large bathroom next to the rooms. And then Leonis questions the purpose of the dance room and the bathroom, and she explains that sacred swords are weapons that manifest in the heart of a sacred swordsman, that is, they cannot exert their full power if they are discouraged. And she talks about a failure from the past, where the swordsman only had one installation in the second assault garden, which was used exclusively for military training, 
and because it was something purely professional, this ended up not being as effective. And upon hearing this, the Demon King understands that this is not just an ordinary military education facility, and well, Celia takes him to the place where he will have his interrogation the next day. But while she explains about the place, the girl simply falls to the floor with her hand on her head, showing that she felt pain from something, so Leonis questions what happened, but Celia says it's nothing, and says she will rest in the dorm, and then return to training. Because their objective is to obtain their sacred sword as quickly as possible, and so they decide to go back. But on the way two girls look at Leonis and think he's cute, but one of them goes beyond the point, saying that he must certainly be a demon, in bed. And when he hears the word demon being mentioned, Leonis turns around and becomes curious about it, but soon comes to his senses, and understands that they must have just used an expression, as they would have no way of knowing who he is. And well, he asks Celia if the majority of the students at the academy would be girls, and she says that the academy also has boys, but they are now in the girls' dormitory now. And then, a man comes up to them and greets them, but Celia doesn't seem to have a good relationship with them, and the man soon makes fun of her, saying that the scar on her belly was due to her going on a mission inappropriate for her level. So she calls Leonis to go quickly, but the guy stands in front of them, and asks who the boy is with her, and Celia says it's none of his business, and the guy laughs like an idiot. And then he mocks her again, saying that Celia, in addition to playing at leading a platoon with marginalized companions, has also become a babysitter now, but Celia decides to review the insults, and says that that boy is actually a sacred swordsman in his own right. But he doesn't believe in what she says, because Leonis is a kid, and the boy, in turn, understands the reason in being seen as inferior, and decides to ignore that act of disrespect, so as not to raise any suspicions. And well, Rhodes goes to her, and invites her to join his platoon, as he is as close to the top of the hierarchy as she can get, and that would make her confident in not being expelled from the academy, even if she is a loser unable to manifest a holy sword. And upon hearing this, Leonis understands that Celia's frustration is due to not having met the expectations of her lineage, and Rhodes says that for her to get out of that mediocrity, all she had to do was join her toy collection. But Leonis looks at that and analyzes the situation, coming to the conclusion that Rhodes must use some type of mind control spell on the girls, in order to impose voluntary slavery on them. And well, the guy tries to convince her again, saying that there is no reason for Celia to risk herself on void research missions, but she refuses his offer, and soon starts to leave, so Rhodes gets angry, and says that she is throwing his goodwill in the trash. But the Demon King realizes that the man is just wanting her body for himself, and then out of nowhere the crazy man pulls her by the hair, saying that Celia has no right to treat him that way. Then Leonis calls him, and when Rhodes looks at the boy, he uses a spell to stun him, then goes to him, and states that the man will never touch any strand of Celia's hair, as he will no longer allow it. And then Rhodes decides to activate his sacred sword, but a girl comes to them, and forbids him from using his sword, as the academy does not allow students to use it in personal confrontations. Furthermore, she states that that place is part of the female dormitory, therefore it should not be there, and if C. Rhodes doesn't leave, she will send the images of her actions to the administration. And upon hearing this, the guy puts the ball down, but tells Leonis that he will pay for what he did, and after they leave, Leonis thinks to himself that even he has his limits, even if he is trying not to attract attention. And well, the girl turns to him, and says that he must be the boy found in the ruins, so she goes to him and introduces herself as Elfine Fillet, and tells him that she is a member of Celia's platoon, being responsible for the analysis of the data. And she tells Celia that she has already taken the boy's measurements, so she will soon get him a uniform, and Leonis notices that those circles that surround her are her sacred sword, and it soon comes to his mind that they can have a variety of forms and skills. And well, Elfine notices that Celia is injured, but she explains that she has already been healed by the skill of Leonis' sacred sword, and Elfine says that this is a very useful skill, but she regrets not being able to accompany her on the mission that day, as it ended up taking longer than expected to process the data requested by the administrative office. Then Celia is interested in knowing what the data would be, and the girl explains that the sensors detected a different magical reaction in that area, and although she eliminated all the noise, she couldn't figure out what it was. And she says that they are sending an elite research team to collect more data on what happened, and while she explains, Celia again feels that dizziness from before, and Elfine goes to see if the girl is okay. And in Leonis's mind, the boy feels that she is close to running out of energy, and well, after that, she takes him to their dormitory, the Hraesvelbe room, and Leonis comments that that place seems much simpler than the others that they saw on the way. In this, Celia explains that accommodation which is assigned to them, depends on their achievements in their platoons, and he questions what a platoon would be, 
and the girl explains that it is a combat unit made up of sacred swordsmen, in other words, that Academy works on the basis of merit of each one. And well, she arrives at Regina's room, but notices that she is sleeping, so she goes back up the stairs, and on the way Celia explains to him that using the sacred swords exhausts the user a lot. And when they arrive at his room, Leonis questions if it's really okay for him to be in the girl's dormitory, but she says it's okay, after all he's a child, but in his mind, the demon king thinks that doesn't make things so normal like that. Well, Celia says she's going to take a shower, and then go to the gym cafeteria, but Leonis turns his face away when he sees her start to take off her clothes, and then Celia says he could go to the bathroom in the meantime. And when he goes there, she asks if after the interrogation he would be willing to join her squad, and upon hearing this he covers it with a sneeze, showing that he is sick, so Celia says that she will leave this conversation for another time. And well, he starts to take a shower, and everything is strange, from the shower to even soap, and Celia goes to him and says that he can't use soap to put it on his head, but Leonis is embarrassed to be seen naked. But Celia doesn't understand this, after all he's just a boy, and so she starts shampooing his hair, and the demon king feels that things have become too modernized, as the customs are different from what he was used to. And as she soaps him up, Celia says that Leonis can join any squad he wants, as sacred healing swords are highly sought after, and this will open doors for him to serve at higher levels. Furthermore, she understands that there is not much reason for him to accept serving in her squad, as the girl has not even awakened her sacred sword, however, she says that if he is interested, she would love to have him work with her. And upon hearing this, the demon king admires her honesty, as Celia made clear his disadvantages in allying with her, and well, he questions why she is so determined to expose herself to the dangers of the battlefield. Because if she doesn't have her sword yet, the ideal would be for someone to fight for her, protecting her. Celia gets excited and starts screaming, saying that she doesn't just want to be protected, she wants to fight too. But when she screams so much, she becomes dizzy again and falls, and the demon touches her groin, making that mark visible again, and then she gets up and goes to him to bite her neck in search of blood. Then Celia wonders why she did that, and Leonis says that he lied when he said he healed her with his sword, because he actually doesn't have the power to revive anyone, but Celia says she doesn't understand what he's saying, so he is more direct, and says that she is actually dead. Well, Celia goes to the training area offertress, to practice with the robots, and after falling to the ground, she remembers the fencing technique that her sisters taught her, and says that it is engraved in her heart. And if the holy sword is the shape of a soul, she feels that her holy sword should take the shape of a sword, well, Rhodes goes there to bother the saddle training, and says that the girl is just losing her time. Because he has already called her to his squad, so she doesn't even need to be training, but she refuses once again, and he says that she couldn't hold out for long, after all, she doesn't even have a sacred sword. And when touching the girl, Regina goes there to protect her with her sword, and Rhodes says that she is not allowed to fight with her sacred weapon, and asks her to calm down. Then Regina says that if Milady awakens to the sacred sword, he would be dead instantly, but Celia says that she does not want to have a sacred sword for that purpose, and questions whether she would actually awaken. And Regina says she's sure this will happen one day, well, the girl wakes up with the demon king on the bed looking at her, and she says she remembers being in the bath, but Leonis says he brought her to bed, and says also that he used magic for this, so he didn't touch it. And then she questions who he was, and he says that he is an ancient wizard who was resurrected, and reveals that in his time humans could use magic freely, and with that magic, he would have resurrected her, as Celia had died in the ruins. However, she questions whether this would be the power of the sacred sword, and Leonis says that he did not imagine being able to create an undead elder, as the result of this far exceeded his expectations, and he says that Celia has the highest classification of dead, alive, she would be the vampire queen. The girl wonders if she really is this vampire queen, and Leonis explains that her condition yesterday was caused by the lack of magic, and the evidence that gives this away was the fact that she sucked the blood from his neck, after all, she needed to recharge her energy. Then she finally understands that she is in fact dead, and then Leonis apologizes, and says that this was the only way he found to save her from complete death, and Celia asks if she can talk a little more about her. And he says yes, so the girl tells him that her hometown was attacked by the voids when she was just nine years old, and that would have been a large-scale outbreak of the voids, called Stampede. And she explains that her entire family were sacred swordsmen, and they all died protecting the city, and meanwhile, Regina and she survived in a shelter and were taken to that school. And since then they expected that Celia would become a sacred swordsman, so she believed that if she fought against the voids, her awakening could occur more quickly, 
and that is why she would have embarked on a dangerous mission. At this Leonis understands that the girl did not meet his own expectations, and Celia questions whether the Sacred Sword will continue to live in her even when she dies, and he says he doesn't know, however, he states that it will be stronger than ever. Well the boy's stomach growls, and Celia remembers that he hasn't eaten since last night, so they go to the cafeteria, but she says that she isn't hungry, and asks if she could eat anyway, and Leonis that he can, since Celia is a vampire. But he explains that it is inefficient to transform food into magic, and then she asks what he would like to eat, and Leonis says it could be bread, after all, he doesn't understand what is written there. However, Celia says that he also needs nutrition, and Leonis feels that she is comparing him to an undead, and upon hearing this, the girl calls him evil, because she thinks it was a joke against her. But he apologizes, and reflects that he is not the undead that Rosalia would like him to be, well, the girl says that she will choose the food for him, and then he thanks her, and says that he will pay for the food. He shows her a gold coin that he was saving, and feels that he managed to impress her with it. But the girl says that Leonis couldn't buy anything with physical money, after all, all rewards are digital there. And he doesn't understand anything, because in his mind, that coin should at least serve as a deposit, since he wouldn't be able to use it as a reward. But Celia explains to him that magical silver is more effective, and the Demon King is incredulous, as it is no longer worth the 2,000 gold coins that the Demon King's army used as military funds. Well, meanwhile, Sakuya and two other guys talk about a debt she owes them, and she says she'll pay it off next week when her salary drops. However, they do not allow it without first having a guarantee, and in that case, one of them tries to take off her clothes, saying that he would keep his clothes, to have a guarantee of payment. But she tells the guys to take their hands off her, and then sends them to the ground, saying that she is a student there, so there is no way she can't pay, and upon seeing her, Leonis feels that she would be a good servant. And then, Celia goes to Sakuya and asks who those guys were, and she says that they work in a casino that she went to yesterday, and that they would be there to pick her up and guide her. And then Celia understands everything, and asks if she received a ticket at the intersection yesterday as compensation, and Sakuya apologizes to her for not being able to go on the mission, as she was wandering around the city after receiving her compensation. Well, she tries to relax, saying that Leonis has an elegant bow and arrow, and asks if he would be the boy who wields the sacred sword, and Celia explains to the boy that Sakuya is at the front of his squad. And he says that she is an elementary school student who has already defeated some voids by herself, and then Sakuya says that it is a pleasure to meet him too, and when Leonis touches her hand, he feels that it is the hand of someone who lives for sword. And when they sit at the table, Leonis notices that Sakuya's clothes are different from her uniform, and the girl explains that they are traditional clothes from her homeland, called Oren. And she says that it is a memory of her sister, as her entire family was also killed by the voids, and she reveals that her mission is to exterminate them, so her colleagues appear to pull Sakuya's ear, as she had already been there, two days without going to class. And Celia says it's reasonable that she got a red dip. after all, the girl keeps skipping class, and after that, Leonis goes to the interrogation room, and her interrogator introduces herself as Regress Alt. And she explains that that step is just to confirm the type of sacred sword he has, and then she asks him to show it, so he calls his Wind Witch, and Regress questions what type of ability he has. And he suggests that it be the support type, but it depends on the situation, in that she understands that he would be the versatile type, well, he looks at the robots, and questions what they would be, and Celia says that they are void simulators, and says that they will fight with those creatures. However, before the fight actually begins, Leonis destroys the robots alone, leaving Regress amazed by such power, which makes the Demon King worried, as he ended up not suppressing his powers. And Regres questions if he was in fact a type of support, and asks him about what he would have done, and then Leonis tries to disagree, and asks if that would have been a bad hit, but Regress says that he destroyed the robots, so no it would have to be a bad blow. And at that moment all the students arrive at the scene, to see what was happening, and Regress says that they will need to investigate every detail of what happened, and they will also need replacements to fight Leonis. And that's when Rhodes appears and is willing to replace the Void robots, and says he will be in charge of interrogating the boy, after all he would have the right to do that, and Leonis says he doesn't mind. Then Rhodes activates his sacred sword, and Celia says that it would be unfair for him to put the four girls to fight Leonis alone, but he explains that that is the ability of his sacred sword, called Dominion, Absolute Domination. Therefore, it would not be unfair at all, because as long as it is under his control, the girls will share his soul, and Leonis says that this makes sense, and states that even so, he will fix them all. And Regress says that if he is in charge of interrogating the boy, then that's fine with her, but Celia gets in the way, saying that she will fight alongside Leonis, 
after all she is his guardian, and Regress doesn't see a problem with that either, because think it makes sense. And then Rhodes agrees to do things this way, but he asks for a condition, if Celia loses the fight, he wants her to join his squad, and before she responds anything, Leonis accepts for her, but proposes a condition too. He wants Rhodes to stop bothering Celia if he loses, and he accepts, but Celia tries to say something to Leonis, and he says he will let Rhodes not even touch his sword. And upon hearing this, Celia is filled with determination, and asks for a training sword, and after choosing her combat weapon, the instructor says that if she notices a danger in the fight, she will intervene with her sword. And after everything is explained, Regress authorizes the start of the fight, and right away Leonis notices that Celia is very well trained, therefore she is not just a simple vampire, and well, Rhodes sends one of his puppets to attack Leonis too. And this worries Celia, but he says she doesn't need to worry, because this time he says he won't let Rhodes get away with it, and then he activates his King of the Shadow Realm barrier, called Mephistomalt, which inhibits the attack from the puppet, and then knocks it to the ground. And well, Celia teases Rhodes, asking him if he could escape her, and then Regina starts running towards the fight, saying that the boy's sacred sword god fell asleep. And when she gets there, she doesn't understand what Celia is doing fighting too, and after finishing off the puppets, she goes to Rhodes and says it's the end of the line for him, after all there's no one left to protect him. However, he uses his power of absolute domination to neutralize all of Celia's movements, and he states that it is impossible to beat him, and after arresting her, he aims his attack at Leonis. And upon hearing this, Celia repeats to herself that she will protect him, even if she doesn't have a sacred sword, but when placed under this pressure stimulus, her sacred sword finally appears, and in fact it was shaped like a sword. And Regress understands that Celia is in fact a remnant of the Crystallia family, and after awakening her sacred sword, Celia manages to break Rhodes' hold on her, leaving him in disbelief. And then she goes to him and destroys his sacred sword, making the puppets return to normal, and then she questions what he will do, and seeing himself with no way out, Rhodes just gives up. And Regina jumps on Celia, saying that she always believed that that moment would come, and finally, she thanks Leonis for that, but he says that he doesn't need to thank her, after all, she is his family member. So she questions what that could be, and the boy explains that a family member is someone who protects their master, so Celia says that she will always protect him from now on. However, she asks him to make her stronger, and Leona states that making her strong is also part of his interests, and well, Celia says that she intends to celebrate the awakening of her sacred sword, and also wants to celebrate Leona's entry to the 18th platoon. And for that Regina prepares dinner for everyone, and Sakuya asks what type of sacred sword she would have, and she explains that it is a light and sharp sword. And Sakuya suggests that Celia call her, Kurisaki Bun Bunmaru, but she doesn't really like the name, and says that she hasn't gotten into the habit of using it yet, so she'll only think of a name later. And Regina turns to Leonis and says that he is now one of them, and Elfine says that she will put the boy's biographical information on the school network, so she asks him to come to her room later. And Sakuya questions which room the boy is staying in, after all the dorm is full, so a girl offers to share her room with him, and says she can cook for him and do whatever the boy wants. However, Sakuya says that she doesn't mind having him in her room either, after all she's used to it, but Celia says that Leonis should stay in her room, and he says that he was found by her, so she's his guardian. But in his mind he finds it more advantageous to do things like this, to be able to keep his secrets, well, after that, he goes to Alfine's room, and notices his sacred sword floating. In this the girl explains that her name is, Witch's Eye, and says that she can collect and analyze data with her, therefore communication is her main skill, but she explains that in the past, her sacred sword was a responsible attacker by firepower. Until on a mission, Tuf's companions were killed by the voids, as a result his sacred sword underwent changes, and lost its original power. And well, she finally gets Leonis' data, and he notices that Elfine has a digital map and asks to use it, so he starts digging into that unknown technology, and locates the region where his old empire, called Death, was located. Hold. And Leonis notices that he is in the jungle of Sherdan now, which a thousand years ago was land, then he slides his finger to another area, and remembers that there was the place where his army and the great swordsman Alakil fought bravely. And when analyzing that information, he notices a correlation between the occurrence of void monsters and past battlefields, he then calls Blackus, and asks to see the results of his investigation so far. And he says he discovered something interesting, he noticed that there is a huge magic crystal in the basement of that island, which humans called the magic chamber. And Leonis says that after dissolving the ghosts, 
the magic crystal appeared in the castle's energy source, and asks if that is the same thing, but Blackus says that the number of magic is different. And on top of that, a complex circuit has apparently been built that distributes magic throughout the city, and although it's terrible technology, the Demon King says it will be very useful if they can bring that force to their side. And then, his assistant says goodbye, and says he will continue the investigation, and Shari appears afterwards, and the Demon King tells her to write the report, and she hands him a donut. And besides, the girl brought several other foods, but he says he doesn't need any more food, and Shari says he's been collecting more information, and discovered that no one in that city knows about the Demon King, nor the Great War fought a thousand years ago. And the Demon King finds this strange, as it is abnormal for people to have forgotten a war of such proportions, and well, Shari shows jealousy of Celia towards him again. And the Demon King asks if she has any complaints, and she says no, and just calls him a fool, but he says that Celia is the highest ranking undead, that is, she is the vampire queen, and he says that if they create her, she will be a great force for their revenge. And in the middle of the conversation, Celia calls him, saying that the bathroom is unoccupied, well, a group of divers are at the bottom of the sea, and one of them gives the report from number 3, and says that there is no evidence of coitus. His superior asks him to expand the target range to carry out the investigation, but the diver notices something strange in front of him, and is soon attacked by an unknown creature. In the year 432, in a city called, Cheyenne City, Leonis walks with a man who explains about a problem he is facing. He says that the workers are always on the verge of being attacked by monsters, even if there are few of them in the mine. However, the man expresses his gratitude to the hero of the Sacred Sword because he is there by his side providing help. But Leonis makes it clear that His Majesty had ordered him to monitor the entire area, therefore he would only be there for work. But the man praises him again, and says that the other six heroes only stay in the palace and in the imperial capital, unlike Leonis who is dedicated to eradicating monsters, but the hero says that he just plays at defeating monsters, and reveals that feels the desire to tame them one day. The man believes that Leonis is just joking, and says that he didn't expect to hear that from the hero who defeated the demon king Zorbadis, well, the two arrive at the aforementioned mine, and Leonis already wonders where the monsters are. But when he looks back, he realizes that the man is gone, and then he is arrested by men using magic. Then other guys appear and bind him with chains. Then they go to the hero and pierce him with their spears. And after the hero loses all his strength, they knock him to the ground, and comment that the fact that Leonis gained more popular support than the king, was his undoing and they say that if he had accepted a little money he would be alive now. And well, Rosalia appears out of nowhere, and feels sorry for him, but says that Leonis possibly realized that it was a trap, and he confirms that he already knew, and Rosalia says that in the end, those in power killed him, even Leonis having saved the world. And he says that things like that happen often, so she asks him if he doesn't feel resentful about that, but he says no, because those men are not bad people for Leonis, and she asks him if he thinks that world is right. And the hero responds that he doesn't care, because regardless of what he thinks, the world will continue the same way, and then she says that although the world doesn't value him, she is interested in Leonis, and states that there are things that only he can do. To see, well, she touches her hand and asks Leonis to be hers, because being a simple hero is something very boring in her view. And after this memory, Leonis wakes up, and feels determined to find her regardless of where she is, is, and wonders if restoring her demon army is her duty after a thousand years. Well, he goes to Celia's room, and asks the girl to wake up, then she gets up out of nowhere, and this is strange, but Leonis raises his hand, and shows his mark, and explains that that is the mark of obedience, which is connected to the brand the girl has. Therefore, being a relative of his, she will naturally obey him, and that's why Celia woke up upon hearing his command, she then feels embarrassed, and asks if she will obey everything he wants to do to her. And he says yes, so she questions whether perverted things would also be an option, but Leonis reassures her, saying that he wouldn't do things like that, and then Celia says that she really doesn't expect things like that from him, after all the boy seemed to be good, behaved while the two took a shower together. And the counselor says there are people in the empire they are worried about the demi-humans, so he wonders if it can be guaranteed that they would not give in to panic. Furthermore, there is the issue of displacement acceleration in the case of a stamp, and the researcher says that it is possible to move it, as it has 90% stability, 
but one of the researchers continues with the idea that this is very risky. And he says that the student's strategic skills still won't be enough to escape the voids, so the phone rings, and when he answers it, one of the investigators is informed that the commander has decided to carry out a new investigation regarding the void's lost response. And with that, they shouldn't rush to attack first, in which the other man explains that they should form three elite reconnaissance platoons, and says that there will be annihilation of the void if the scale is small, as he reveals that he is already tired of all those attacks caused by the voids. Then the girl next to her says that she will show the information obtained in the investigation, just in case, and well, Celia goes to the training area, to fight with the robots and perfect her skill with the sacred sword. And upon seeing her practicing, Leonis praises her, saying that she is improving her technique a lot, and Celia asks if he knows anything about fencing, and Leonis responds that he knows a little, and asks if she has ever had a master. And then Celia explains that she was trained by her family since she was little, but when she arrived at the academy, the training was up to her, and she says that she also didn't have time to ask Sakuya for help to learn swordsmanship. And Leonis reveals to her that her real ability as a vampire queen is her immense amount of magic, and he explains that by having her magical power modeled and improved, added to Celia's skill with the sword, she would be one step closer ahead of becoming a magical swordswoman. And upon hearing this, she gets excited to train even harder, and he, in turn, proposes to summon an even stronger enemy for her to face. Leonis then summons an army of skeleton men, and this leaves Celia confused. Then the boy explains that those beings are his closest relatives, and is impressed by the fact that Celia has never seen a skeleton before, and well, he says that she could defeat as many as she wanted. Then the girl draws her sword and says that she will not hold back in the fight, and so she continues killing several of them, but Leonis begins to summon even more skeletons to fight. And after she finishes them all, the boy states that that is enough for her training, and asks if she wants to replace her mana, and Celia accepts, and Leonis realizes that her body is gradually getting used to fighting. And she says that she's not yet at her full potential, but she's already better than before, and Celia says that it's all thanks to him, and Leonis says that he just wants his family to be strong, so she invites him to lunch, since he was kind enough to train her. And Celia comments that there is a famous restaurant outside the gym, but upon hearing this, Leona scolds her, saying that the girl shouldn't spend money all the time, but her stomach starts to growl, and the king demon regrets having such a weak and mortal body. Well, Alpha Squad is ordered to continue the investigation in the UK 6402 area immediately, and while Finesse Sacred Sword makes the rounds, the divers head to the area where the void was spotted. And the counselor says there are people in the empire they are worried about the demi-humans, so he wonders if it can be guaranteed that they would not give in to panic. Furthermore, there is the issue of displacement acceleration in the case of a stamp, and the researcher says that it is possible to move it, as it has 90% stability, but one of the researchers continues with the idea that this is very risky. And he says that the student's strategic skills still won't be enough to escape the voids, so the phone rings, and when he answers it, one of the investigators is informed that the commander has decided to carry out a new investigation regarding the void's lost response. And with that, they shouldn't rush to attack first, in which the other man explains that they should form three elite reconnaissance platoons, and says that there will be annihilation of the void if the scale is small, as he reveals that he is already tired of all those attacks caused by the voids. Then the girl next to her says that she will show the information obtained in the investigation, just in case, and well, Celia goes to the training area, to fight with the robots and perfect her skill with the sacred sword. And upon seeing her practicing, Leonis praises her, saying that she is improving her technique a lot, and Celia asks if he knows anything about fencing, and Leonis responds that he knows a little, and asks if she has ever had a master. And then Celia explains that she was trained by her family since she was little, but when she arrived at the academy, the training was up to her, and she says that she also didn't have time to ask Sakuya for help to learn swordsmanship. And Leonis reveals to her that her real ability as a vampire queen is her immense amount of magic, and he explains that by having her magical power modeled and improved, added to Celia's skill with the sword, she would be one step closer ahead of becoming a magical swordswoman. And upon hearing this, she gets excited to train even harder, and he, in turn, 
proposes to summon an even stronger enemy for her to face. Leonis then summons an army of skeleton men, and this leaves Celia confused. Then the boy explains that those beings are his closest relatives, and is impressed by the fact that Celia has never seen a skeleton before, and well, he says that she could defeat as many as she wanted. Then the girl draws her sword and says that she will not hold back in the fight, and so she continues killing several of them, but Leonis begins to summon even more skeletons to fight. And after she finishes them all, the boy states that that is enough for her training, and asks if she wants to replace her mana, and Celia accepts, and Leonis realizes that her body is gradually getting used to fighting. And she says that she's not yet at her full potential, but she's already better than before, and Celia says that it's all thanks to him, and Leonis says that he just wants his family to be strong, so she invites him to lunch, since he was kind enough to train her. And Celia comments that there is a famous restaurant outside the gym, but upon hearing this, Leona scolds her, saying that the girl shouldn't spend money all the time, but her stomach starts to growl, and the king demon regrets having such a weak and mortal body. Well, Alpha Squad is ordered to continue the investigation in the UK 6402 area immediately, and while Finesse Sacred Sword makes the rounds, the divers head to the area where the void was spotted. Well, when Sakuya goes outside, she notices a very beautiful dog, and goes there to admire him, and when she sees that he doesn't have a collar, Sakuya realizes that he doesn't have any owner, and so she adopts him and names him Kuragain Mafumofu. But the dog starts growling at her, and the girl decides to go home, and well, Fine is still working, until Regina interrupts her to offer her a sweet potato treat. And she says that because it's her day off, she was thinking about making a snack for Leonis, so Fine tastes her candy and says it's very good, and then another person enters the room, in this case it was Sakuya, and she tells him about the dog she had found, and says she gave him a name. But Regina says that she just gave a name to a stray, and Fine tells the girl not to feed him, well, she takes Regina's candy and goes to the couch, whereupon Miss questions why her seniors are even in uniform, on a holiday day, and Fine explains that they are in uniform as a precaution, after all they can be summoned by the instructor at any time, and she tells them about the investigation at sea that she is on patrol, and says that the investigation force has not yet returned to the surface. And Regina questions whether that was because of Void, but Fine says that they still don't know, and asks about Celia, and the girl says that she must certainly be in her usual place, because it's a holiday. And well, she's riding a motorcycle with Leonis, and the boy notices that human civilization seems a lot darker now that he's seeing her again, and in the meantime, Sherry gets a job, just to get money to buy snacks for her. The Demon King. And then her boss appears and asks her to help him cut the potatoes, and because his knife wasn't sharp enough, Sherry decides to use hers, but her knife was so sharp that she ended up cutting it even through the plate. And this makes the boss angry, but she says she just did what he asked, and he asks her to take care of cleaning the store, after all the girl is a disaster in the kitchen. But when she was about to leave, Sherry notices the Demon King arriving with Celia at the scene, and she asks Leonis to wait for her outside, and Sherry gets angry when she sees that Celia was buying snacks for the Demon King in her place, and says that her master is very lenient with his family. And well, she watches the two of them leave, and wonders where they are going, and the two arrive at a summer house, where the girl explains that this is the famous restaurant that she had mentioned earlier. And then a group of children come out and show that they are happy to see Celia, and she explains to Leonis that the place, in addition to being a restaurant, is a shelter for children, and says that she usually works there part-time every day. Times. And upon seeing them, Leonis wonders if they were orphans, and then a memory comes to his mind, where he is thrown and abandoned in a dark street, well, they enter the establishment, and one of the children comments that they were sad, for Celia not going to play with them anymore. And she apologizes, and explains that she is very busy with her studies, and then one of the boys plays with her, lifting Celia's skirt, and upon seeing this scene, Leonis finds it unforgivable, and decides to restrain the boy. But she says he's just a kid, and that makes the Demon King wonder if he's going too far with his impulses, and well, the boy's mother shows up and tells him to calm down with his mischief, and Celia introduces the owner of the restaurant to Leonis, and says her name is Frenia, and she asks who the boy is, 
and Celia explains that it is the boy she found in the ruins, and says that he already has a sacred sword at such a young age. And upon learning this, the children come to him excitedly, well, Celia brings vegetables from her dorm's garden, and Phrenia thanks her for the help that the girl always gives them. Furthermore, Celia says that she brought donuts for them, and this makes the children leave Leonis alone, but the boy's mother says that they will only eat the donuts after dinner. Well, Leonis analyzes the situation, and understands that that was the place that Celia wanted to protect, and this reminds him of his empire, and the destruction that he could not prevent from happening to his fellow men. And meanwhile, the divers continue the investigation, and one of the men, when resting his ear on the wall, is able to hear a suspicious noise, and Fine observes that there are underground vibrations close to the city. And Regina returns with more sweet potato candy, but soon notices the tense atmosphere in the room, and Sakuya also wonders why things are so restless, well, the investigators arrive at a room with the roots of that supposed tree. And as they get deeper into the place, one of the roots begins to take shape and starts to face them, and meanwhile, Celia continues with Leonis in Phrenia's restaurant. In the year 428 of the Sacred Calendar, trolls invade a city wall located on the border of the Kingdom of Lagnas, and all environments despair, in this Tyrus says that they cannot keep Shardark waiting. As for Arakil, you say that those beasts must be eliminated within the wall, but this would kill the inhabitants too, but Arakil says that they can then be resurrected by Tyrus. And then he starts preparing his magic attack, and says that doing things that way is the most effective way to finish off the monsters, but Leonis draws his sword and stops the attack, after all he can't stand the idea of having to kill innocent civilians, even if they are later resurrected. Then he attacks the monsters, and a child notices his arrival, and then it doesn't take long for the other inhabitants to realize that they were being saved by a hero who fights bravely against the monsters. And when cleaning the area, Everyone applauds him, but Arakil is very sorry for Leonis, after all, all his power will put a tragic end in his life sooner or later, and well, returning to the present, that tree monster is walking around the basement again. And the researchers comment that the target UK 6402 has disappeared, even though it is a very large object. One of the researchers questions whether it really would be a void, and the other investigator says that the being may have been crystallized and he suggests that they find the being to destroy it before it resurfaces. And the investigator draws the vice commander's attention to inform him that an Excalibur user from Platoon 18 is asking for permission to present the results of his analysis, and the advisor says that because the platoon has two digits, it is a platoon of students. And the investigator tells him that the girl in question is the youngest daughter of the Philette family, and specializes in analysis, but upon hearing this the other investigator finds it strange that a member of the Philet family is in that city. And the counselor explains to him that the girl's father helped with the weapons development meetings, so he has no problem giving the girl permission to present her analysis. And well, they put the girl on a call, for her to tell her what she discovered, in which Elfine says that she has just detected vibrations in the underground of District 62 and she says that the incident occurred at 11 hours and 3 minutes and at the same time hear a reaction of magical energy. And Elfine explains that after separating the data, she was able to better clarify the magical waves, and by analyzing the characteristic changes in space, and also the disturbances that occurred from certain coordinates, she was able to detect a specific type of damage. And then she goes on to say that at 14 past 11, two blocks near District 59 also detected disturbances similar to that, and with all that data on the table, the girl concludes that there is the presence of a void in the place. At this, the investigators become distressed, and question whether she is saying that there is a void infiltrated beneath the ground, and well, the investigator says that in District 59 there are reports of four mysterious vibrations, and she explains that the probable cause of the incident is in Maintenance Corridor 29. This makes men even more distressed, and question whether there is a void reaction at the location, and ask why the detection device is not responding, and the investigator explains that this is because the void reaction is very weak. And he says that perhaps this influenced the phenomenon to be treated as a common accident, so the investigator questions where UK 6402 went, and the investigator explains that in the float module cluster, there is a connection structure that allows the being to infiltrate. And well, 
At that moment an alert alarm goes off and the investigator says that District 31 has detected a security disturbance, where the target is moving continuously, and the counselor questions why the being is not releasing magical energy. And L. Fine explains that he could be limiting his power recklessly, to sneak in, but the counselor disagrees with this hypothesis, as a void shouldn't be that smart. And Elfine asks if the clues to UK 6402's crystal have been found yet. But before they can answer her, another alarm goes off and it was about a report from the inventory control department, and the report said that in hold 226, there were something similar to the roots of living plants has been found. And the investigators ask them to check the place immediately. And Regina says that she is unable to have contact with Celia, so Elfine asks where she is. And the girl replies that she is in the sun house, and says that she must possibly be accompanied by Leonis too. And Elfine is able to find them both with her eye of the witch, and Regina questions whether the void's infiltration of the city is real, and she says yes but hopes there aren't many of them walking around, but still therefore, Elfine says that they must remain on alert. And meanwhile, Celia remains in the restaurant spending time with the children, and one of the children asks Leonis to show them his sacred sword, and he feels that that boy seems to have a lot of courage, and Chisela says that he shouldn't do it. This, so as not to make the boy's brother uncomfortable. Well, she hands Leonis a napkin, and he reflects on the girl being a very polite child, to which the girl says that she also thinks he's incredible for being able to use the sacred sword, but after praising him so intensely, the girl runs a shame. And meanwhile, the investigator explains that the rescue team found UK 6402's footprints in the maintenance corridor, and the investigators warn that Alpha 1 has already reached hold 226, and the men question whether they should destroy those mysterious roots. And well, the men are attacked by that creature in which the investigator says that the being finally showed its true form but he still wonders why UK 6402 is underground, the counselor says that the anti-aircraft defense of that city is very strong but says that when it comes to underground defense, they are very weak. Well, the other investigator asks if it wasn't time for them to retreat, and the vice commander informs that he is unable to contact the commander of the imperial capital but to make matters worse one of the investigators says that the destruction of the area caused the interruption of communication of the city but still the investigator orders them to destroy the enemy after all he is just one in this the investigator says that he will instruct the council just in case well the other investigator informs that the connection with the rescue team has been re-established and that the investigator immediately goes to the computer and asks if they were successful in the mission. Then the men inform that the monster managed to escape from them, and the commander is confused, as the natural reaction of a void would be to continue attacking them, but the investigator suggests that the monster must just be guarding its power, while the other investigator explains that the monster has always chased the power supply channel. And the investigator understands that he does this because it is easy to cross this corridor, well, Elfine explains that the energy of the supply channel is blocked, and she says that when observing the movements of the being from its place of origin, everything takes to believe that UK 6402 is heading towards the magic furnace. And the girl explains that if the monster is Lord Void, then he is capable of unleashing a stampede using the great magical energy of the magical furnace, and upon hearing this, the vice commander asks them to protect the furnace. And the investigator explains that the place where the furnace is has a strong defense system, but even so, he orders them to send troops there, so the being was about to reach the furnace, but is soon attacked by security equipment. Well, the troops arrive at the location, and report that they are facing UK 6402, and the advisor says that if the imperial capital cannot be contacted, the vice commander will take over the role of commander. And then he informs everyone that due to the appearance of Void UK 6402, the seventh assault garden has switched to defensive fortress mode, so he asks everyone to prepare to evacuate the inhabitants and face the stampede, and the investigator says he will lead the command center. And meanwhile, Leonis continues to be bothered by the children, 
after all they want him to show them his sacred sword but the restaurant owner explains that the sword is not a toy, and asks the children to stop doing that. But Celia says that he should make the children happy and show the sacred sword but Leonis says that he has something more interesting to show, in this case it would be a strange skeleton, and well, the conflict in the magical furnace continues, and the being manages to penetrate the power supply to the furnace, thus causing it to be interrupted. Then a loud alarm appears in the city, and when going outside, Celia notices that the fortress is changing mode, and in addition several voids begin to appear, and Celia understands that a stampede is occurring at that exact moment. And everyone inside the fortress prepares strategic procedures to combat a large-scale void invasion, and the investigator explains that the void has interrupted the magical furnace's energy supply, but says that the magical energy reserves in each district are sufficient. There, the counselor informs everyone that help from the imperial capital will arrive in a maximum of three days, and asks if they will be able to resist until then, and the investigator says that they will try, and also says that the academy student certainly would not give up in just three days. And well, Regina asks about Celia, and Elfine explains that she would soon go there, as the safety procedure for the inhabitants is to take refuge in one of the district centers, and she says that the important thing at the moment is for them to focus on facing the enemy ahead. Then the three activate their sacred swords, and attack the voids, and meanwhile, Celia says that she can't have contact with the academy, and says that they must take people from the restaurant to the bunkers, and well, Sherry reappears, and questions what would his orders be in that situation, but he asks why he is following him, and she just assures him that she is not there to find out more about his new family member, and Leonis says that it is an exaggeration for her to pursue him, after all he is her master, and well, he tells her to leave, and Celia calls Leonis, and tells the residents of the restaurant that they should go to the bunker, but Leonis says it's dangerous for them to go outside. So she tells them to stay inside the restaurant and goes to attack the voids, but the Demon King reflects that she has not yet reached her full potential as Queen of Vampires, and he asks if she is not afraid of that fight. And Celia says she has, but she needs to go over him, because the salvation of those children depends on her now, and in the meantime, Leonis just imagines that it would be a waste to let his strongest family member die, and that's why he decides to support her in combat. And well, he launches fire magic to defeat some voids, and this leaves Celia impressed, as she had not yet seen this power coming from him, and the Demon King feels a slight nostalgia with all that, as that fight brings back memories of his past. And meanwhile, the three girls are surprised by three ogres that come to them, but Sakuya attacks the monsters with her sword, and says that she will take care of it alone, well, after defeating them, they notice a giant monster taking over city, and Elfine wonders if that monster would be a kind of hydra, after all it seems to be very resistant, well, Leonis notes that even the great dragons were corrupted by the void, and he understands that if the monster's magical energy is equivalent to that of these dragons, basic spells won't be able to stop them. In this he explains to Celia that he will use a powerful technique, and asks her to protect him for a while, she then fulfills his request, but while the demon king prepares the attack, he is left wondering what to do, after all he shouldn't care about preventing the destruction of a human city. However, he understands that it would not be right to stand still after someone dares to challenge him and his family, and so he launches his magic, called Zemexis Jura, whereupon the whole place is flooded with fireballs, and Leonis tells Celia to stand still wherever so that she doesn't get hurt. And well, the enemy is still standing, and the Demon King remembers that his power is still limited, due to the conditions of his current body, and so he decides to use another magic, called Grand Reseix and this power knocked the monster down. However, soon after, a crater opens and breaks the ground, and root tentacles come out of the crater and begin to pull Celia into the abyss, and then Leonis tries to stop him, but he arrives late and Celia is dragged into the pit floor. Then a monster with roots appears and calls the boy by his name, and Leonis recognizes that being as Arachiel de Gradios. In the year 434, and in the capital dead alive with Necrozoa, Leonis, now older, goes to Rosalia, and she asks if he visited the battlefield, to which he replies yes, and says that he died twice in combat but in the end he was victorious, as he is the undead king, and he gives her some spoils that were confiscated from the enemy palace, 
and Rosalia accepts his gift but asks Leonis to keep them for her and then she comments that he has become a true demon lord. And Leonis explains that he has developed a variety of powerful spells, and made a new friend as well, a member of the royalty of the Shadow Kingdom and his name is Blackest Shadow Prince, and Leonis says that this new friend got involved in a dangerous dispute, but Leonis says he will still be willing to let the people of Blackest shelter in his shadow when necessary. And he explains that he learned this spell of storing things from Blackest, and well, Rosalia says that she also wants to give him a gift to celebrate his victory, in this case it would be a sword, and she explains that the artifact belonged to him during his time as a hero. However, that was the demonic sword, and Rosalia says that this sword suits Leonis's current personality much more, and she explains that that blade cannot be drawn out of nowhere, to do so a certain condition must be met, and Allah says that the sword will need to question Leonis' truth. And well, the scene cuts to the current moment, and Leonis tells Arakiel that he didn't expect to find him a thousand years in the future, and he notices that the monster is about to generate more voids, and Leonis understands that he is the cause of the stampede mentioned by Roselia. He then attacks the monster and goes into the abyss to look for Celia, and he doesn't find her, but Leonis notices that the control mark hasn't disappeared yet, so she's still alive somewhere so he understands that Arakiel's objective is is actually to attract Leonis. And he fulfills the monster's request, but says that this time he will destroy it once and for all, and then Blackus appears and comments on the resurgence of this old enemy, and Leonis says that Arakiel is much more different than he used to be. It was a day, but different from before, now Arakiel became the leader of the Void. And Blackus says that Arakiel humbled himself after this millennium, all in favor of becoming an unrecognizable monster, and Leonis says that this is not a bad thing, because the fact that Arakiel was resurrected means that Rosalia is also alive somewhere. And well, Blackus notices that that family from before are outside the cabin, and says that they shouldn't be exposing themselves to danger like that, so he questions whether those people had any relationship with Leonis and the boy understands that such a devastating power of this fact would attract fear in people's hearts, and he comments that it was like that with him too, when Leonis was a human and a hero. And well, he asks Blackus to wait for him, and goes to the family, and asks if they would be safer if they were wielding his staff, and one of the girls says that she just wanted to thank him for protecting everyone, and she says that everyone is fine now, so he should go and rescue Celia. And the girl begs him to save her, in that Leonis is surprised, because in his mind everyone would be disgusted with him, but things were the opposite, they were grateful, and Leonis says that the little girl could count on him, as he would rescue Celia too. And then he tells himself that a demon lord doesn't go back on his word, so he uses his level 8 spell, called Zoodoma, then he orders his elite warriors to stand up. And so he makes a barrier around the cabin with guards to protect the family, and he explains that as long as they stay in the building, they will be safe, and he does this so he doesn't have to worry about protecting them because they will be safe, even if they are attacked. And Leonis also did this to preserve the people that Celia cares about, as not defending them would tarnish his reputation with her, and it would also not be good for his title as Demon Lord, well, his servant shows some skewers that he found near the Leonis residence. And the boy questions whether he would have stolen it, and Blackus explains that someone from the Shadow Kingdom would never do something like that, and says that a human gave it to him after he allowed her to caress his neck. And well, they notice that Elfine calls out to Celia through her equipment, and the girl's sacred sword appears soon after, Sakuya goes after a void, and then Regina goes on the attack too, to help her companion, and she says this is not the time to give up the fight. And Elfine tries to contact Celia again, and tells her that they are facing a Hydroclass void near the west of the designated district, and she explains that even with the adjacent platoons, they still have little power, so she asks Celia again to go until then. And then Leonis takes the call, and says that Celia was kidnapped by voids, but he states that he will rescue her, but he will need Elfine to determine Celia's location using her sacred sword, but upon hearing this, the girl doesn't think so. A good idea and tells Leonis to leave this mission to the platoon in charge of that district to take care of. However, he says that there is no one there, and Elfine says that the people in this platoon must just be busy, and asks Leonis to wait for them, and the boy says that it will be too late to wait for so long. And meanwhile, the other two continue fighting against the Void Hydra, 
and Leonis again asks Elfine to map that area with her sacred sword, and when she looks at the damage, she is amazed, as she didn't know that Leonis was so powerful. And then he says he will explain this later, and asks Elfine again to trust him to do this mission, and she finally accepts, and says she will track Celia's archived bio-signature, and she notices that the girl is on sublevel number 7, near the heart of Assault Garden. And then she starts to collect the readings in the power plant block, but while she is working on it, the monster tries to attack her, but Elfine is saved by Sherry, but soon after the girl hides, so as not to be seen by the girls, in this she complains to her master, after all he is making her work until her bones get tired. However, she comments that working with him is still easier than working at the donut shop, and well, Leonis Blackus invades the plant, and the servant explains that there is a huge mana crystal in that place, and Leonis asks him to take it straight to this place. At this point, Blackus questions whether Sherry was helping humans, and the boy answers yes, and he explains that the girl started out as an assassin who tried to kill him, so she would have no problem killing a monster, if necessary. But Blackus is still confused, and asks why Leona sent her to take care of them, as the two are about to face one of their heroes, and he explains that Elfine's sacred sword skills will already be useful for the mission, and furthermore, Leonis explains that Regina is his servant's maid. But upon hearing this Blackus says that his answer doesn't make sense, and he says that he also doesn't understand why he placed a protective barrier around that family's cabin, and at that the demon king stops lying and confesses that he liked it a little. Of humans, therefore I wanted to protect them. And well, after going further, they come face to face with Arakiel, and Leonis says that the time has come for that monster to return his servant, so he attacks him with the Zafa Media magic, but the monster manages to regenerate at the same moment, and Arakiel comments that he thought Leonis had died a millennium ago. And upon hearing this, Leonis notices that the creature is still intelligent enough to speak, and he explains that he did not die, he just sealed his soul, but Arakiel says that he is a fool, as the world has changed a lot since the last time Leonis was alive. And Arakiel says that that world will be rebuilt together with the empty star, and Leonis doesn't understand this term, in which the monster explains that he was chosen to be the bearer of a new future, at that moment several shining faces emerge from its branches. And Leonis realizes that Arakiel has assimilated the priests of the sacred order, and well, he calls for Celia, and she listens to him, but the girl was trapped and couldn't talk to him, so Leonis goes after the monster, and attacks him with Shurianos, then Blackus tries to attack him too, but he notices that they are at a disadvantage against Arakiel, because their magic is gradually becoming less powerful, and Leonis says he is right, because that entire area is Arakiel's domain, and this gives him the advantage in combat, in addition, Leonis says that the enemy must possibly be sapping their mana. Then Arakiel invokes his level 8 sacred sorcery called Lex Megiddo, and then they begin to be attacked from all sides, and Leonis attacks him with Arzum, but Arakiel acts quickly and protects himself against the attack. And Blackus explains that the monster is sucking the energy from the mana crystal, therefore he has unlimited firepower, and Leonis says that in addition, Arakiel is capable of casting several spells at the same time, as he has assimilated several priests. And well, the demon lord says he's going to try to do something risky, and warns his servant that things are going to get crazy from now on, and meanwhile, Celia sits on the sidelines watching everything, and feels the urge to help Leonis in the fight, in this she begins to force herself to do something, because if it weren't for her awakening her sacred sword it wouldn't have been worth anything. And while she tries to cut the roots of the tree that traps her, Leonis continues the fight, and he teams up with Blackus to attack him with Howling Flame, but Arakiel counterattacks with Lex Megiddo, and Celia continues trying hard to get out of it, and says it is no longer the same as it was six years ago. In this she finally manages to free herself, with Leonis helps, and Arakiel asks how he did it, and he explains that he just gave some of his blood mixed with mana to Celia, and then he catches her, and says that Celia got the hang of controlling her vampire powers. And well, she shows an object with blood, and asks if it's hers, and Leonis explains that she just needed a little push from him, and she thanks him, because thanks to him, she can join the fight. However, Arakiel says that he will still crush Leonis, 
so he starts attacking them with several simultaneous level 10 spells and Blackus understands that the monster's objective is to burn the entire city from below including himself. And well, Leona says that he will get rid of that monster but he asks Celia to cover him in the meantime, and she readily agrees to help him, so the girl takes up the fight, and says that she will show all the power of her sacred sword for them, Leonis goes to Arakiel, and Blackus notes that he will use his demonic sword to fight the enemy, and Leonis explains that now he can fight at will, after all he has already recovered his servant, so he would not need to be discreet, but Blackus asks if he is really prepared for this, after all in this coup there are many ramifications involved and so Leonis remembers that Rosalia had said that the sword will question his truth in using it. And he asks her if the sword kept her will as a sacred sword, and Rosalia explains that the result of her blessing had transformed it into a demonic sword, and in it there is an impressive amount of power, and therefore the sword must remain closed. In this he understands that the sword will remain sealed until a certain condition has been met, and for Leonis, the condition to use it would be to protect his kingdom, and so he draws the demonic sword, and tells Arakiel that he has the objective if you possess his power. In this he claims that land as his own, and then he begins to fill the seventh garden by assault from now on as his kingdom, therefore all who reside there must become his subjects, and with that comes his duty to protect it. Them. Leonis then remembers that Celia had told him that that sword is the blade granted by the heavens, and is destined to save the world, but Leonis goes in the opposite direction, and says that it is a blade forged to rebel against the heavens and destroy the world. And Rosalia continues her speech, saying that that blade is sacred and blessed by the gods, but Leonis understands it as a wicked blade, and blessed by a single goddess, and he states that by having that sword by his side he could take anyone their enemies to ruin. And then he names the blade as the demonic sword, at which Arakiel is surprised, and asks where he got that sword, and when he sees that his enemy is trembling with fear, Leonis says that now it is too late for regrets, and he explains that you will conquer the destiny of the world with your own hands. In this he attacks him with his technique, called Ragna Perdu, and this completely destroys Arakiel, and meanwhile, the researchers notice that the emergence of new voids has ceased, and they also realize that the remaining forces are reducing the rest, and then they are left wondering if they were the ones who saved the city. And the other investigator informs that Yuf the Void, called UK 6402 also disappeared, in addition, he notices that the stampede also appears to be dying, as for the plant, the investigator informs that there was a release of energy there, and this would have shut it down shortly afterwards. In this the counselor understands that the Lord of the Void was killed when he was swept away by the collapse of the power plant, and while they stay there thinking they saved the city, Leonis leaves the underground area of his new kingdom, and soon meets up with the other girls, and Celia says everyone in the 18th platoon is safe and well. And the next day, Leonis's body is sore all over, and he understands that this must be a punishment for having used his sword skills, besides his body is very limited, and in addition, Leonis notices that he is completing without mana. And well, Celia shows up with a sandwich for him, and in addition to the snack, she brought a medal, and says that it was the little ones from Sunny Spot House who made it for him, to thank Leonis for his help, in which he remembers that he ended up claiming humanity as subjects of his kingdom, and they they had been his enemies for a thousand years. However, the demon lord believes that he must protect anyone who provides services to him, even if they are humans, well, Celia comments to him that wielding his sacred sword took a lot of blood from her, so she asks him to give some of his blood for her. And so he accepts, and when she starts sucking the blood from his finger, the girls show up just in time and get it all wrong, and Sakuya says they picked a bad time to enter, and Elfine tells Celia that that ledge is strictly prohibited in the dormitory. In this she tries to give the excuse that she was healing his injuries, and meanwhile, on the ship investigating the voids, a man says he was impressed by his master's quick decision to leave right after receiving the news of the crash if stampede, and she says that she didn't expect him to be taken down at such an early stage, and the girl states that as a master, she should show her appreciation to the swordsman who defended the garden from assault. And then, after dealing with the voids, the repairs began again, furthermore, the crystal that provided magic to humans was also destroyed, and so, they had to replace them with solar panels, 
until they were repaired. And for Leonis, these are scary technologies, and even though this is his kingdom, there are still many things he doesn't know, and therefore he will investigate, but when he would use his card to enter a place, he has his access denied. And the spirit that was there says that to enter the library, permission is needed, and Leonis is impressed by the fairy being alive even in this era, and he says that he is a student at the academy. However, the owl tells him to look for the administration so that they can evaluate his data and give him permission. But when Leonis was already getting pissed, Regina appears and closes her eyes, asking him who it would be. But Leonis just guesses that it was her and says that they are in a public place, and she complains to the boy that he should just pretend not to know who it is and enjoy the contact of her breasts. And he asks if she was just there to make fun of him, and she says she was returning some software books, and asks what he was doing there, and Leonis lies, saying that he wanted to look for some old texts about the letters they found where he was sealed. Everything to bring back some memories, but Regina doesn't seem to buy the conversation, but she says she finds it sad that she doesn't remember the past, and so she goes to the spirit and asks to enter, but he was already denying. But Regina looks firmly at him and the spirit seems to be hypnotized, allowing him to enter, and then Leonis asks if she can control spirits, but Regina says it's just a trick and tells him to keep it a secret for the honor of artificial spirits. And he is surprised that spirits are being created artificially, and he asks what happened to the original spirit, but Regina says that it disappeared before the voids arrived, but they say that it is still in the ancient forest. And there, she finds the record of the ancient languages, but they are interrupted by a call on their phones, they are being summoned to a social gathering, it will be organized by the fourth princess, Altira Ray. And Leonis once again finds this useful, as the royal family is the only one in charge of everything there, and then, Celia calls him asking where Leonis was, and he says he was sorting something out. And she says that they would eat together, but Leonis says that he would eat something with her later, and Leonis tells Regina that after checking everything he needs, he will meet them at the port, and Regina tells him not to worry and to have fun between them. And so, hidden and planning, some people are interested in kidnapping the fourth princess, they want to keep her as a hostage so that her companions in the capital can be released. And they are impressed that humans live in such a peaceful place while they go through hell outside, but when he was about to continue talking, the Oni asks if they, who don't have the sacred sword, could stand up to the humans who have them. And they start to argue because of their question, but a woman who was hiding in the trees there starts talking about their doubts and their determination, and when he appears, the lion asks who she is. And they also ask if she feels better than those who come from O'Hara, but she says she is far from that, in addition to saying that she is also an Ajin like them, and she claims to hate humans. And the elf asks if she came to help with the kidnapping, but she says that she actually came to give them power, a power even greater than that of the sacred swords, and then, she starts to release mana. And a sacred sword appears in front of them, and she aims it at the lion, causing a magic circle to appear in front of him and throw power into him, and she says that she would be giving him power that way and it really seems to work. And they are surprised, especially because only humans can have sacred swords, but she explains to them that it is not a sacred sword, but a demonic sword given by the goddess herself. And then, the Oni begins to believe that with this power, they will have the chance to kidnap the princess, and the elf says that she will give each of them a demonic sword, and she proposes that they go to Hyperion soon and get the princess. And so, they are excited to recover their companions, but the elf starts with the wrong conversation, asking if they could do her a favor before that, and she says that her goddess needs a sacrifice. And she asks them to leave at least one sacred sword user alive, and they agree, but the black lion still takes off to ask her name, and she tells them that she is Charnak the witch of the dark forest. And already at the port, Leonis comes across the new ship and is impressed, saying that for his empire he needs at least two of these, and then he goes to buy something for his servants, and he finds an ornament for them in a stall. The wrist made by elves. And he is surprised by the fact that there are elves there and the man says that among the Ajins, there are elves, werewolves, and even tiger men and he says that many of them live there. And then, the princess appears to greet everyone and Regina watches her from afar, so Leonis goes to see what this is about, and starts to think about the princess's popularity, when the girls arrive, saying that they were looking for him, and she arrives complaining and starts talking too much, so Leonis takes a cat pendant out of his pocket, 
saying he bought it for her. And then the girl gets really emotional and he notices that her mood has improved at least a little. And she jokes with him that if he continues like this, he will end up becoming a demon king in the future. But he realizes that she was playing with his flirtatious personality, and so she calls them to get on the boat. But Leonis asks if Regina wouldn't come, especially because he imagines that she is someone who likes that kind of thing. But they don't seem to answer his question honestly and then, someone calls Celia. And she recognizes that Blonde is Fenris, and she starts to ask if Celia wants to see the boat, but she says that they were invited to the social meeting. But Fenris says that he is there as a representative of the executive department. And she starts to imply that the people in this department are busy, unlike her, who seems like an idiot, and then, Elfine goes to break up her childish fight, and she says that she had no plans to upset her senpai. And before going, Fenris asks about Celia's sacred sword, saying that she heard about her awakening, and for that she congratulates her. And inside the boat, the guards are taken by surprise and shot down, and after killing them, they tear off their faces with the demonic sword and use them as masks, making it possible to assume their identities. And inside the party, the girls continue doing their crazy things and Leonis watches the book he copied with his automatic magic, and with that book, he is sure that someone is covering up the past. He says that there is nothing about the six heroes or the gods of the past, they say that the records were lost in the past, but there are no records about when magic became extinct, nor when magical technology began. And to pass the time, he starts talking about his current favorite drink, and in that, his maid appears, and he says that he didn't ask for her to appear there, but she insists that she needed to, and in that, he asks how things are going. And in that, she says that the source of this boat is also a magical crystal armed with the same defense as the city and she says that she found a flying weapon in it, and he continues with the questions, but she says that she still needs to investigate. And then he releases her, but first he says that he needs to give her a gift, and when he makes the girl happy, he goes there and gives her a cho making her angry, and she says that a gift shouldn't specifically be food, calling him stupid. And then, when he was about to fight with her, Celia arrives and calls him, and Leonis quickly hides everything and when he looks at the girl, she is in a bikini, asking him to swim, but Leonis starts to make excuses, saying that the human body was not made for swimming, and he says he doesn't have shorts. But Celia resolves this quickly and says that if he can't swim, she will teach him, and we soon see the demon king humiliated for not knowing how to swim and hypnotized by the floats that Celia carries on her blouse. And Fine even says that it was good for Leonis, because he was able to swim soon after being taught, and people start talking about him, and the girls give him a bath in swimming, leaving Leonis increasingly frustrated. And in the afternoon, Regina is alone eating, when guards pass by her saying that the time for the meeting is coming and she wonders what she is doing. And inside the ship, while the princess was transported, the Ajins manage to catch her, but the princess ends up letting her pet run and the witch tells them to leave it alone, and inside the hall the Ajins reveal themselves after firing their first shots. And Leonis soon reasons that there must be more of them there, but the wolf activates his sword, and they are surprised that he has won and Fenris tries to activate his, but is stopped and then the old elf throws an explosive apple near them, saying that if they try to activate their swords, it will explode, and since they have no way out, only fear remains, and then, they take the cell phones and start saying that the princess will be kidnapped. And a man asks what they want, and the wolf says that they want to free their companions, but Fenris says that the Empire will not negotiate with a terrorist like him, and he gets angry wanting to kill her. But the Oni stops him, saying that they are prohibited from killing sword users, and he says he understands, since they will be a sacrifice for the goddess, and this catches Leonis's attention. And while he shows himself with the power of the goddess, Leonis says that he will guarantee the princess's safety, and disappears, so the girls try to cover up his disappearance. Meanwhile, the Ajins force the princess to activate the insignia, and she asks if they will keep the deal that will keep the people on the battleship safe, and the witch says yes, and the princess continues following orders, but an invasion of voids appears, and she orders them to go ahead towards the voids, because whoever wields the sword in fear will be a good sacrifice for their goddess and when the lion realizes what the witch is really like, he thinks about killing her. But the fire from his sword begins to burn him and she asks him if he thought he could kill her with the sword she gave him, 
and then she tells the one who was left that if he wants to live he must continue to give her listening. And outside, the boat starts to leave and Regina finds this strange, and as she approaches, the princess's fox comes close to her and when she touches it, a message from the princess says that the boat had been taken hostage and she needed to do something. And then she jumps on the moving boat and we return to Leonis Lost, until he finds the fox and comes face to face with Regina, asking what she is doing there, but Regina seems shaken and says she needs to act quickly, saying that her sister is in danger. And guys, if you want to see the continuation of this crazy ride, leave a like and let's go with everything towards 30,000 subscribers, I'll see you in the next video, I went.